G'day guys, welcome back to another episode of Flashlight Crazy. Today I'm reviewing the Phoenix TK11 TAC. Let's check it out. Alrighty, so we'll take a look at the box first and we'll take a look at the contents of the box. But before anything, I just want to point out that this is a real fantastic light because 18650 slash CR123As. So at first glance, when you see that, you realize, awesome, this can be used as like a bug out bag light because anything that can take primary batteries uh, that are non-rechargeable, in my opinion, can be used as a bug out bag light because if the grid fails and if there's no more electricity or even if you lose your charger or whatever, uh, you can still, you know, grab boxes of the uh, primary batteries, the CR123s or CR123As, and you can still use, use this light with them. So just wanted to point that out because it's a fantastic feature. Now, Looking on the back, it's standard Phoenix box. It's just gonna give you all your modes and your outputs, your run times, all that sort of stuff. Here we have here, impact resistance, one meter, submersible to IP68 rating. So that is two meters. All right, so these are the contents of the box. Now, before I cover any of this, I'm going to cover the one major negative about this light, and that is it does not come with a battery. So I don't know why Phoenix did that, and maybe this light came out during a time when they weren't including batteries, I don't know, but just, it's very important to know, if you buy this light, then you will be buying it without a battery. Okay, so the holster here is looking to me as though it is a decent quality holster, I'd probably give it a four or five out of 10, um, it's, you know, not the worst, not the best. We've got one loop here for your belt. That always concerns me with one loop because if the threading fails or this loop fails, then the holster's useless. I'm guessing because of the size of the head, yep, that it just slots in like that, closes up, and there we have it. So it is a snug fit. It's a really nice fit, actually. Uh, and let's just, yep, we got some decent Velcro on that as well. Happy with that. You are going to get two spare O-rings. That's a great little additive. Uh, always, you know, spare O-rings is always good because they help with the water resistance. Here you have your TK11 TAC uh, user manual. So that's a very important thing to have to tell you all about it. Now, I do like to just uh, go over user manuals briefly and just let you guys know what type of information you're going to get in it. So over here to the left, uh, it's gonna give you basically all the information that I'm very happy with. And one of those pieces of information that I'm extremely happy with is it tells you what LED is used. Now, just looking at that LED, uh, because I've been doing this for a little bit now, I would have assumed that that is a luminous SST40. And my assumptions are correct because it says here, one luminous SST40 LED with a lifespan of 50,000 hours. So things like that are really important to me to be included in the user manual. Yeah, you want your run times, you want your lumen outputs, uh, you, you, know, you definitely want your, your uh, one meter impact resistance and your two meter water resistance and all that sort of stuff. But for the average person who just buys a light and, and you know, doesn't have the knowledge or the experience to look at that and say, oh, what emitter is that? It's good that they've written that down for you. So I'm really happy about that. Also very happy that it says powered by one 18650 uh, rechargeable lithium ion battery or two CR123A batteries. So that's the user manual covered. Uh, very happy with the information it provides. Now you will get this Phoenix kind of advertising pamphlet, which just gives you the other models that are currently available. That one looks cool, the uh, outdoors lantern. That looks great. That'd be great for inside of a tent. Uh, or for you bike riders out there, that one would be pretty cool too. Uh, and of course, you're gonna get your Phoenix warranty card. Now, can't stress enough, when you buy from Grey Markets, I don't know if some of them do, but most of them don't give you a warranty card. Uh, you don't have a warranty. 
I buy most, I buy 99% of my lights from lightshop.com.au. There is an array of reasons why I do that. Uh, one of which is that they're an authorized dealer. Also, Adam is just an absolute gentleman and a fantastic person to deal with. Uh, but also, he is an authorized dealer of so many brands, just like any other authorized dealer. So I'm not just saying you only have to go to Lightshop. If there's something that Lightshop doesn't have, make sure you buy it from an authorized dealer because you will get a warranty card. You will get a, a human being who is interacting with you if you have a problem with the light. You know, not not all of these lights are, are made without issues. Some of them are going to be faulty. And if you're unlucky enough to get a faulty one from a gray market, it's going to be very difficult to claim that warranty. So, or even get a response from someone, whoever the hell they are. Um, so yeah, I'm a massive advocate for, for authorized dealers wherever you go. All right, but enough about me. Let's take a look at this thing. So first and foremost, let's look at the design and the feel of it in the hand. So the design, well, it does has, have this kind of trumpet look, uh, meaning it's got the, the big head, the long, slim body. Now, starting at the head, as you can see, we've got a nice crenulated bezel there. Could be used for a strike bezel. Also very useful for if you've got it face down and you've left the light on, you will see uh, that there is light coming out of it. Now, if we look down here, we've got a smooth reflector. The color that you can see, that kind of tint, is anti-reflective coating. That's good to know, so it's not going to reflect back in your eyes or, or into a stranger's eyes, for that matter, if you're trying to uh, go without being noticed. As I said earlier, that is a luminous SST40 LED down the bottom. That's going to give a really nice even beam. It's going to give a great large hotspot. Uh, the reflector is going to give you awesome spill. So this is going to be a really, really useful kind of everyday light. Now, on the body, this is the typical Phoenix body. And when I say typical, let me just show you what I mean. So look at the bodies. Look at the bodies. They are all, they all have this kind of beautiful... Uh, like really kind of thin, thin little ribs uh, on their bodies uh, separated by this long line, right? And they've had no, they must be having such success with these body types because they just had, they haven't changed it. Uh, they've got them on like 90% of their lights and I love it, more power to them. And just a spoiler alert, we will be doing a comparison uh, between the E28R and the E35R shortly as well because they are two fantastic EDC lights. One 21700, the other 18650, you know, which is better type of thing. But um, let's not steal the thunder of the TK11 tack. So yeah, the body is is wonderful. Like I said, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So, and Phoenix is definitely living by that because this body here is just phenomenal. It the, the It's grippy, It's it feels good in the hand. Uh, and as you can see there, I like to bend the uh, pocket clip into my palm when I hold my lights because then you can kind of barely feel it as opposed to having the pocket clip over the fingers. It's very uncomfortable. So that's how I like it. And now speaking of the pocket clip, very, very sturdy. Uh, one, it's not, it, it's not an issue, but it is a personal preference. I would have loved if the pocket clip here came up to about here. So if it came up to there, right at the bottom of where the rotary switch is, which I'll cover, uh, that would have made for fantastic uh, deep carry. Uh, and it wouldn't even be full on deep carry, but it would have been a lot deeper than this. Because as it stands right now, if I just come around and show you, these are just your standard trackies, right? Uh, often I wear trackies for comfort. But look, the light does poke out quite a bit. And it, that's going to be the same in jeans. It's going to be the same in anything like that. Now, very comfortable light to pocket because the head is actually not too big. Uh, I know it's bigger than the body, but it's actually not too big and it fits in a pocket just fine, but you do have a lot of sticking out. Now, some people might like that. They might be like, well, it's, it actually makes it a lot easier to grab. Fair enough, if that's how you feel. For me, I would have preferred a little bit more deep carry. But because of how brilliant this light is, how robust it is, and the fact that it's so diverse with 18650 CR123As, uh, it just doesn't bother me. Now, at the end here, we do have your tail cap. And so I'll just show you, just unscrew the tail cap so you can see. So that is the tail cap. 
And the tail cap is kind of broken up into three sections. It's broken up into just the sturdy tail cap bit here that screws onto the light. It's then broken up into this rotary switch there. And then the actual clicky at the top right there. Now, before I put the uh, tail cap back on, there is a spring at both ends and I'll just, how do I, there we go. So there's a spring down there as well. So that is, now, the reason for the springs is obviously because it's going to hold the battery in place, but check this out. So I've got a couple of CR123As, right? Now, they're a lot thinner than the 18650, and have a listen, they rattle around there, but because of the springs, watch this. Screw them up, no more rattle. So the springs are holding the CR123As in place, and now, Light still works. Light still works. So fantastic light to be able to support CR123As and 18650 without any of the batteries rattling. Phenomenal. So in goes the 18650. Now we are going to weigh this with the 18650 and then we'll weigh it with the CR123s. So... Pocket clip and fully charged 18650 comes in at 164.44 grams. Now pocket clip and CR123s, 146.71 grams. Now the face comes in at 33.95 millimeters. The body tapers in at 23.35 millimeters. Tail cap kicks out to 25.74 millimeters. And the overall length of the Phoenix TK11 TAC my friends, is 141.25 millimeters. So it's overall quite a great size light. Now, I must give this gentleman a shout out. So my friend, Jeff Berger, uh, has been telling me to get my hands on one of these and review it for ages. And it this is his like... Uh, his absolute favorite light, one of, one of, one of favorite lights. He's a well tool fanatic like myself, but this is one of his favorite lights. He just talks about how reliable it is, the fact that it can have CR123s or the 18650. But what else he mentions is this. He, like myself, uh, enjoys a bit of a theorem switchback every now and then. And he told me that this light takes a theorem switchback without any adjustments or any kind of uh, do-it-yourself-at-home changes. So let's take the pocket clip off and I'll just show you how it works. Oh, now, by the way, the reason it took me so long, Jeff, to get this and for everyone else who's uh, interested is because I refused to buy it from anywhere else unless Light Shop stocked it. And then as soon as Light Shop ha had it in stock, I snapped it up because I knew that uh, if Jeff talks about it being so amazing, then I'm sure it is. Now, what I do is I put the lid in, the lid, I put the tail cap in at the, so that the, so I can see back here um, the, the three symbols. So that's the tactical symbol. Well, that's the tactical symbol. That's the lockout symbol. That's the daily mode symbol. Then all you do, I'll just put the battery in to show you. All you do is you just screw the bloody thing on. Now, Make sure that you screw slowly when it gets to the, uh, there it is, when it gets to the uh, O-ring, otherwise you can hurt the O-ring. Now, spin that around again so I like it there. Look at that, a perfect fit with a Theorem switchback. No, no need for electrical tape or extra O-rings or anything like that, it is a friggin' perfect fit. How cool is that? Now, that is your tactical mode. Then, if you wanna swap it, Turn it. We are in lockout mode. Turn it one more. We are in daily mode. And daily mode is so simple. Low, medium, and high. That's it. You can cycle momentary or you click it on and then cycle. Fantastic like this. Absolutely fantastic. In fact, whilst we're on that, let's go over the UI, shall we? So, as I'm sure you've already picked up on, there are two different modes and a lockout mode. So the daily mode here, which is that, that one there with the little cycle, that has your three outputs. That has your low, medium, and high. Now, both tactical mode and daily mode both have strobe. It is 1600 lumens, and all you have to do is just press and hold, and then you've got strobe. 
Very, very bright, very, very gross in my opinion. Now, other than that, let's click it on and get to low. So low mode here, and look at that SST40 with the kind of uh, shadowy hotspot. It's going to get really nice when you when you up the the uh, lumen output because it just blends really nice, as you'll see in the night shots. But for now, we're on low. Low's 50 lumens. You're going to get 47 hours and 30 minutes out of that. Holy macaroni. That's awesome. Now, Phoenix says it's going to reach 60 meters. There's no way I'd use this for 60 meters. I'd probably use this for about 10 meters, to be honest. Uh, and it does say it's pushed out by 857 candela, and I would probably believe that. Now, half press, you're in medium mode, fantastic medium mode. It is 500 lumens. You're going to get that for four and a half hours. Phoenix does say 195 meters of throw. Again, probably use it for 30 meters. Uh, and it is 30 or 40 meters, actually, and it's pushed out by 9,525 candela. Half press, that is 1,600 lumens, 1,600, and you will get that for two hours. I'm not sure if there's a step down or not, but we will do a heat test over about a minute and a half, two minutes to see if there is a step down. Phoenix says you can use this for 335 meters. I'd probably use it up to about 100, uh, and it is pushed out by 27,893 candela. Now, if you want to swap to tactical mode, so before I swap, actually, let me let me explain. I would always keep this in daily mode or probably in lockout when I'm walking around. And then I would often use daily mode more often than not. And I would leave it in low because it does have memory mode. And that is going to be my kind of like everyday use. My, if I'm in the cinemas, uh, searching for something in the car, uh, just, you know, your, your, your everyday usage uh, mode, that is going to be where, where it would be. Now, if I was walking around a sketchy neighborhood or if I wanted to just know that I've got instant access to, six, to 1,600 lumens, 1,600 lumens, um, without having to fumble around or change outputs, that's when I put it to tactical mode, which is that symbol right there. That means as soon as you click it, you've got 1,600 lumens, as I said, for two hours, uh, 335 meters, 27,893 candela. Or you can press and hold and you've got strobe. But if you turn it off from strobe in tactical mode and turn it back on, there's no strobe. Same with uh, daily mode. Strobe is not remembered in the memory mode. But in daily mode, everything else is remembered. So let's get it to low, turn it off, wait a second, turn it back on, low. Get it to medium, turn it off, wait a second, turn it back on, medium and high, turn it off, wait a second and high. So. We do have the old memory mode in uh, in your daily mode. If I had a preference, I'd probably say get rid of memory mode and just have it come on in low all the time. That way you know that every time it's in daily mode, it's always going to come on in low. And every time it's in tactical mode, it's always going to come on in turbo. And if you wanted medium mode from, ta from uh, daily mode, you just click it twice. So I, I'm actually more these days leaning towards more of a... Uh, not non-memory than memory mode person. I, I, I just like to know what mode my light's going to come in on every time. Now, the battery life for the uh, 18650 is is pretty good, but I, I just want to point something out, which is another amazing thing. Whether or not you're using an 18650 or two CR123s, the mode outputs, like the lumen outputs and the run times are exactly the same, according to Phoenix. So... What it says on the box, and I'll just read it to you so that you can, you know, this is the interpretation I have, but it says the above specifications, so the ones that I just read out to you with the lumen outputs and run times, are from the results produced by Phoenix through its laboratory testing using the Phoenix ARB L-L18-3500 rechargeable battery and two CR123A lithium batteries under the temperature of 21 to 23 degrees Celsius and a humidity of 50% to 80%. So what that means is they they tested it with two CR123As and also the 18650 and they got the same run times and outputs under those temperatures that I just read out to you. Meaning that you don't have to worry about losing run time or out, outputs if you are chucking in a couple of CR123As.
great? Yeah, I think so too. All right, let's do a heat test. Let's get this on tactical mode, smash it on turbo, and we'll do a heat test, and let's watch out for a, uh, a step down. I'll, I'll see if I can go for two minutes. All right, after two minutes, 35 degrees Celsius. God, it's not even warm. I mean, it's warm, but it's not even, it's not overly hot. I reckon you might get, you might get 1600 lumens for the entire two hours. I could be wrong, but there was no step down in two minutes and the head is not very hot. Uh, so that's pretty amazing. Very happy with that. All right, let's do a quick beam shot. So on the mat there, as you can see, you've got a nice hot spot. You do have bleeding, beautiful spill. As soon as I move it up, check the hot spot. It does start to morph into the uh, bleeding and spill. That's what you're going to get with a Luminous SST40. Fantastic mixed beam profile, especially at a distance. So let's wait no further and we'll go outside and see what this thing can do at night. Uh, and then we'll come back for some final thoughts and prices and where to buy. Spoiler alert, lightshop.com.au. See you in a sec. All right, the TK11. Now, this is just on low mode. Nothing too special, although what the camera's not really picking up, and I've said this before, guys, but I've got to invest in a better camera for these night shots, but there's actually a nice area of spill. There's a fairly nice area of spill, even on low mode. But now if I, boom, step up, that's medium mode, and it's just a brilliant mixed beam light, this. Fantastic. Oh, yeah. No worries at all. Really great spill. Now let's go up here. Remember, this is just medium mode. And now let's go here. Bang. So that's high. It's the highest output you're going to get. And it's phenomenal. It's a great light. I love this light. The, the idea of this light in like a bug out bag is awesome because it is basically unbreakable and it takes CR123s. So the good thing about CR123s or CR123As uh, is that you can buy, you know, five boxes of them. They're going to last for 10 years and you chuck them in a bug out bag and then you've got, you don't have to worry about electricity if, you know, everything goes belly up. So that's a cool thing for people who like to, you know, prepare for worst case scenarios. Now I'll just turn it off, get it to tactical mode and then bang, which is just high anyway, but I just wanted to show you that that's tactical mode. So it's just, you know, click the switch and you're in the highest output. Tree over hundred meters away. It is getting it. It's milky, but it is getting it. But this is a light I would use to just, you know, illuminate a large area uh, because of the beautiful mixed beam uh, light that it has. It's just gorgeous. Look at that. Seriously, seriously amazing. My friend Jeff told me about this light. He harped on about it for ages. I'm not saying I didn't listen to him, but it took me a long time to get around to getting one. And then Light Shop stocked them and I jumped straight on it and I am not regretting a second of it. And this, my friends, is going in the keep pile, this light. No joke. It is fantastic. Fantastic. All right. I am out. Oh, wait. Strobe. There you go. For all the strobe heads. Variable strobe. Very, very distracting. Wouldn't like to be on the receiving end. God, that is enough. All right. See ya. All right. Let's start with pros and cons. Uh, con. I wish it had a deeper carry pocket clip. I really do. For me, that's a con. It may not be for other people. Uh, another con, doesn't come with a battery. That kind of sucks. But <clears throat> apart from that, um, this light is pretty phenomenal. Uh, I suppose I didn't cover it in the review, actually, but... Oh, I suppose we're still in the review. But I didn't cover it in the meat of the review. But another slight con for me, although it's not a massive, massive, massive deal, but another slight con is the tail clicky itself. Now... I'm very happy that the tail clicky is a forward clicky, so you can momentary. I am happy about that. Oh, 
momentary. There it is. What I what is annoying is that it's not it's not as sensitive and it's not a rubber clicky. So it is hardened plastic, uh, and for that reason, it's just it's 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 very different to to some other rubber cli to some other clickies that you'll be used to if you're used to the rubber clicky. If you have used a PD thirty six R tack from Phoenix. Um, or I think it's the TK22 tack. They both have the same rotary switch and the tail clicky. If you like those, you'll love this because it's exactly the same. But it, you, some people might dislike it. So I just wanted to put that out there that it's not a rubber clicky and it is, just have a listen. It is different to, it's different to your, you know, your usual clicky. Um, so you hear that? It's it, it's just it's a plasticky mechanism. It's not rubber clicky. It's still forward clicky. So I barely have to touch it, and it turns on. Can momentary no dramas? And as I showed you on daily mode, you can momentary through outputs no problem at all. Like that. But just to be aware that it's not your standard rubber clicky. That's all. Apart from those three things, uh, I love this light. I think it's fantastic. It's, it comes in at 130 Australian dollars from lightshop.com.au. I will put a discount code in there so you can get, I think, 5% off. But the fact that this thing is reliable, no matter if it's a rechargeable lithium-ion 18650 or a non-rechargeable or two non-rechargeable 123A batteries uh, is fantastic. It makes for a great bug out light. It is very robust. It's built like a brick. And as I, I said, my mate Jeff over in the States has used one of these for friggin' ever. And he's wanted me to review this for a long, long time just because he stands by it. And and I see why. I, I genuinely see why. It is a great light. It pockets really, really well. Apart from the non-deep carry, it pockets really, really well. But if you put the, what I put it, if you put the Theorem switch back on it, it actually pockets slightly deeper, which is fantastic. So... Now, by that token, if it fits a normal Theorem switchback, it will also fit a Theorem deep carry pocket clip as well. So that means that you can have this in deep carry if you just put a Theorem deep carry pocket clip on it. So look, I stand by this light genuinely. I think it's a fantastic light. Any light that can double as a bug out bag light if the electricity goes down, I think is fantastic. You don't have to worry about recharging the battery if you've got a box of... Uh, primary one, two, three A's. So I like, I like this light. I think that anyone who buys it will like this light as well. Uh, and I will link it in the description so you can go have a look at it at lightshop.com.au. All right. I think I covered everything. If I didn't, I apologize. Uh, as usual, guys, thanks very much for watching. And until next time, stay cool and stay safe. See ya.